Hi, and welcome back to Yoga with Tim. Today I'm here with Marlene, and she's gonna be demonstrating the poses. And today we're gonna to do a class that is focused on your scapulothoracic joint, opening up your shoulder girdle, but integrating your core while you do that. So, to get this started, you're gonna need a strap for today's class. I'm also gonna recommend you have a couple blocks. Not necessary, though. The strap is gonna be necessary. Let's begin today's class standing. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is focus on externally rotating our arms to help to set the shoulder blade on the back. Now, oh, should we look at this one? Marlene, I'm gonna turn you to this way, away from the camera so people can see your shoulder blades. Okay, so when we practice a lot of vinyasa yoga, and I'll make this as brief as I can so we get into it, when we practice a lot of vinyasa yoga, the shoulders have a tendency to slouch forward and down because the front delt gets stronger as do the chest muscles from all the pushing. There isn't a lot of pulling actions which will activate the rear delt and help to set uh, actually and to help to strengthen the middle traps and the lower traps to hold the shoulder blade in a position more like this. So it's kind of a bummer, but a lot of people end up with rounded shoulders from practicing yoga. So what I want you to do with the strap is take it across your wrists and to have it shoulder distance apart. And if you have tighter shoulders like me, I would go even wider than shoulder distance. Okay, so the thing that you're gonna do with this strap is to start to press out into it and to turn your biceps out. Now, you're gonna have one bicep that turns faster than the other, and you're gonna have a shoulder blade that's more willing to go on the back than the other. Think of it like you're racking billiard balls and you're trying to like get them in that thing and, get one, and one keeps trying to bounce the other ball out of position. So try to get them just balanced on your back, the shoulder blades. And as you're doing this, you'll start to feel a stretch across the front of your chest. Now Marlena is lifting the strap away from the hips, which you can do that if you can start to feel that you're able to maintain that, but you might just wanna keep the strap on your butt as you're rolling the shoulders. You can lift it off, it's okay. All right, so let's see. Now the shoulder blades are starting to come onto the back and they're looking pretty even. How are yours going at home? The next thing that you're gonna do, turn to face this way, now, when you start to do this shoulder blade action, you wanna make sure that you don't harden your front ribs forward. So at the same time, start to broaden, open your back ribs, and create space between your back ribs and your buttocks without tucking your butt either. Press down into your heels, flow your groins, your inner upper thighs, back over your ankles and down, and then start to engage from your outer hips, firm towards your feet, and lift up through your chest. The last thing, bring your head right up on top of the spine, although with the hands back like this, then the head wants to shrink forward. It's like yoga whack-a-mole. You fix one thing, and then the other thing gets weird, and the other, uh, everything tries to go all over the place. So the last thing is right from behind your ears, these bones right here, you want these to balance back over your ankles as well. Okay, then we're gonna release the strap off of you and just stand in mountain pose chest open, then inhale, raise your arms up, exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, come into a flat back position, step back into a plank pose. Lower down onto your belly, Inhale into cobra pose. Now when you come into cobra, don't push so much with your hands. In fact, lift your hands up off the mat just a centimeter, and let me see if you can integrate those same actions that we did with the strap. If we had more time, I'd have you tie that strap even on your elbows and try to get the shoulders to move. So instead of trying to lift the chest away from the floor here, I instead want you to reach your chest forward and feel the blades can really come onto the back. Now you can place the hands back down in an effort to bring the blades onto the back more instead of trying to push away from the ground. Then make sure with your thighs that your inner thighs, your groins are releasing up to the ceiling like I'm showing instead of hardening down to the floor, which is gonna clench the side butt into the bottom of the tail and turn your thighs out. Press the tops of the feet down, scoop your belly up to your chest, then lower your heart back down, push up into plank pose. 
Stretch back into downward facing dog. Set your knees down onto the floor. Hands underneath your shoulders. As you exhale, round your back and look back at your navel and spread your shoulder blades. Open all this up, but without hiking your traps. Then inhale into cow. I always forget which one's cat, which one's cow, because it's not logical at all. Well, I guess the cat is kind of, cats do that. And then round your back, tuck your buttocks, tuck your belly in, spread your bottom blades towards your hands without hiking your traps, and inhale into the cow. Moo. Exhale into the cat one more time. And inhale. Good, then come into neutral spine. Step back into plank pose. Hold in your plank, middle in, legs strong. Bring your right knee up to your elbow. Change left knee up to your elbow. Change right knee up. Change left knee up. Change right knee up. Change left knee up. Stretch that leg back. Lie back down onto your belly. Inhale into Cobra Pose. Roll your heart forward as you stretch through your legs. Lower your chest back down. Press up into Plank Pose and stretch back into Downward Facing Dog. Hold in your Down Dog. Press down evenly into your hands. Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale into a flat back, elongate. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come all the way up. Reach down through your feet as you raise your arms. Exhale, samastiti. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come into a flat back. Step back into plank pose. Hold in your plank. Bring right knee up to your elbow. Change left knee up. Change right knee up. Change left knee up. Stretch that leg back. Lie down onto your belly. Stretch your arms forward, reach to your hands. Then as you press the hands down, engage your glutes, firm your hips and your buttocks towards your feet and lift your legs up just an inch up off the mat. Then press your feet down, bend your elbows back into cactus position, hold the hands up off the mat. Your head is up too, but instead of jamming your chin forward, keep your neck muscles long. Then slowly lower your heart a little closer to the ground so you find a neutral spine and stretch your arms straight out to the side. Now turn your thumbs to point up so you turn on your external rotators. And in this pose, we're helping to stretch out those tight muscles in your chest and strengthen the muscles in the back of your shoulder. Then stretch your arms straight back behind you still with the thumbs pointing up a little bit. So you're in external rotation Again, helping to roll the front of the shoulder open and engage in the back. Then stretch your arms all the way forward. Reach forward through the crown, lower the head so it's even with the spine. Now lift the legs up too, as long as it's not too much on your lower back. If it is, you can press the hands back down like in the first round. Then slide the hands into cobra position, press the feet down and hold in cobra Lower your heart back down, press up into plank pose, stretch back into dog pose. 
Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale into a flat back, elongate. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up, raise your arms. Exhale, Samastiti. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back into plank. Hold in your plank. Now we're gonna do the knee ups, but this time we're gonna twist. So bring your right knee towards your left elbow. Inhale, reach back. Try to keep your shoulder girdle even. Exhale the left knee to the right elbow. So turning from your belly and your hips, but not from your shoulders. Change sides. Exhale right knee to the left elbow. Good, don't let those shoulders twist. Inhale, reach back. Exhale left knee to right elbow. Inhale, reach it back. Hold strong in your plank. Then set your knees down or the legs straight. Lower slowly to elbow height. Chaturanga. Pause, lift back up, lower all the way down onto your belly. Inhale into cobra position, roll your chest forward as you press the tops of your feet down. Exhale, stretch your arms forward. Turn your thumbs up. As you inhale, reach past your fingers and your toes, lifting the hands up if you can without the upper traps taking over. Exhale into cactus position, bend your elbows back. Inhale, stretch your arms forward. Reach to your toes, reach past your fingers. Exhale into cactus position. Inhale, reach arms forward. Exhale into cactus. Hold, then stretch the arms straight out to the side and turn the thumbs up a little. So you turn on your external rotators, the back of the shoulders getting strong, but keep your chest a little closer to the ground so you're really using your shoulders instead of your lower back. Then stretch your arms straight back behind you. Thumb still turned up a little bit, a little variation than the classic. Place your hands into uh, cobra position again. Feel those external rotators on. Bring your blades onto the back without the elbows crunching in. Many will try to crunch the elbows in instead of actually using the back muscles. Then lower your heart down, find neutral. Press into plank pose from there, holding the neutral spine so you don't sink in your middle and stretch back into downward facing dog. Good, now in down dog, spread from the bottoms of your blades into your hands. Press into your hands evenly, then raise your right leg up from the inner thigh without your rib cage sinking. So brace in here on your ribs as you stretch the right leg. And then think of growing your right leg from your hip and from your tail, from your buttocks into your foot. Exhale the knee to your chest, shift into plank pose. Now come into the cat back, so round your back, spread your shoulder blades without the traps hiking, let the neck even round so you're looking back towards your navel as you pull up. And then inhale, slowly lower your knee so it's hovering just a centimeter above the floor and find a flat back, not a cat, not a cow. Exhale, pull back up. Shoulders go right over the heel of the hand. Inhale, slowly lower, come into the flat back. Exhale, pull back up, use your core. Push from your bottom blades into your hands. Push into the hands. Inhale, lower slowly, hover there, one inch above. 20 more times. Exhale, pull your knee up into your chest. I'm just kidding, this is the last one. Step your foot all the way up by your thumb. Good job. Then lower your back knee down to the floor for half moon lunges. No, I'm just kidding. That's a, someone said, can you do half moon lunges? I'm like, I don't even know that that's a thing. Raise your, you know how I ask if you, what you wanna see? Someone said they wanna see half moon lunges and I wondered what yoga channel they've been watching. I don't know that was a, Okay, then bend the elbows out to the side, cactus position, lift your heart, but I appreciate your request. Raise your arms back up. Bring your hands down to the mat. Curl your back toes under, lift your back knee up. Now let's see if we can integrate what you learned at foot at the wall class. Heel up over the toe mounds, back thigh lifted, but track your right sit bone. Don't let your knee cave in. You might need to push out with the feet more like we learned on that week. Then from there, lift your belly and float your arms back behind you. Strong in this position. 
Okay, now, in this position, as you bring your head up into the line of your pelvis, so from your pelvis to your ribs, chest, head, you have a long line. That means that you're using your core. If you're hunched over, you can't find that line. You're not, if you've gone past it, you're not using your core. Find that position. And then let's see if now you can integrate. We're going to do that exaggeration with the arms, like you're in this trap again. Again, this is a little bit of an exaggeration from really what a neutral position is for the shoulder. That's okay. And then lift from your belly and come all the way up. Arms up, crescent lunge. And we'll hold here for five. So feel that you're lifting up through your back thigh bone and spin your left inner thigh back. Or uh, yeah, spin it back as you track your right hip. Lift up through the sides of your chest, grow your arms. Good, then bring your hands down to the mat, step back into plank pose. Hold in your plank, or lower slowly into low plank position, adding a chaturanga push-up, and press straight back up. Downward facing dog, glide back. Push evenly into your hands. Then lift your left leg up from the inner thigh, but keep your middle in, your rib cage in, without being rigid. Grow your hip through the reach of your foot. Exhale the knee to your chest, shift into plank. Bring the shoulder right over the wrist. Pull up, spread, spread, spread. Spread those shoulder blades without hiking the traps. Pull up in your, in your belly. Then inhale, slowly lower your knee. Hover it just a centimeter above. Spread your collarbones, open your chest. Exhale, pull back up. Tuck the buttocks under. Inhale, slowly lower, heart forward. Exhale, pull back up, tuck your butt, open your back ribs, look back towards your navel, spread, spread, spread those blades, but don't hike the traps to do it. And step your foot up by your thumb. Oh my gosh. Lower your back knee down. Descend through your right shin, left heel, then lift up the skin of the front of your pelvis as you raise your arms up. Skin of the front of the pelvis. Reach, bend the elbows out to the side, cactus arms. Inhale, reach back up. Bring your hands back down to the mat. Curl your back toes under, lift the back knee up. Then float your arms back at your side. Don't let that hip wander, hug the hip, keep your knee tracking. And then lift up so that you're in the line of your pelvis. I could draw a line from your back ankle to your hip to your shoulders all the way up to your ears. Find that line of energy in your body so that you're using your core muscles. And then start to bring the shoulder blades onto the back, but don't let the bully shoulder blade take over. Good. Now press to your feet. Inhale to come up. Raise your arms up. Turn your right inner thigh back towards the wall behind you so that your hip bones start to point straight ahead. Lift from your heart up into your hands, but at the same time, lift your back ribs so that your lower back doesn't sink. Bring your hands back down to the mat. Step back into plank pose. Take a vinyasa or just stretch right back into downward facing dog. Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale into a flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, chair pose. Bend your knees, sit your hips back. Come up to stand, samastiti. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Step back to plank pose. Hold in your plank, open up your shoulder girdle as much as you can from the center of your chest, spread to the tips of your shoulders. Spread across the upper traps at the same time. Hold your middle in, 
then shift forward and lower slowly to elbow height, maintaining that. Don't let your head sink below it. Inhale into cobra or upward dog. Now as you hold in that upward dog, again, look for all that space here. Instead of throwing your head back, sinking from your lower back, keep your navel pulling up and stretch back into downward facing dog. Warrior one, step your right foot up by your right thumb, set up your back foot, inhale, come up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Spread across the tops of the shoulders without your belly pushing out. Stretch back into downward facing dog. Step your left foot, warrior one. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward dog. Now in down dog, bring your feet together and roll to the outside edge of your left foot as you take your right arm up. Vashistasa and side plank. You can modify this pose by setting your knee down. Now as you're holding, look for the space for your shoulder girdle again and line up yourself, find your mountain pose line to your ankles, to your hips, to your shoulders, to your ears. When you do that, your body will want to try to push the ribs out. So remember from the beginning, soften the front bottom ribs back in and down as you breathe space across your back ribs. Stretch back into downward facing dog. Bring your feet together and roll to the outside edge of your right foot. Take your left arm up. Remember, you can just set your knee down and work on the strength that way. Otherwise, if you're feeling strong enough to hold here, line up with the ankles, stack your hip, stack your left hip right up on top of your right so that your hip isn't twisted open, because that's cheating. Good, then stretch back into downward facing dog. Step your right foot for crescent lunge. Engage your outer hip, lift your belly and come up. Then bring your arms down at your side. Lean right back out over your knee again. Bring your hands onto a tall block, a couple of stack blocks, or if you don't have blocks, you're just gonna have to step up into warrior three without. Put the hands down, lean into your right foot, and raise your back leg. Now the first thing that I want you to do is to level your hips and level your waist to the floor. And then like we practiced in the three-legged dog, reach through your hip, out through your foot. Then, you don't want to be rounded, but you don't want to be overarched. So feel a line from your hips to your shoulders to your eel, ears, eels, and then see if you can take one arm back behind you without losing it. And the other arm. Good. Now let's do that exaggeration with the arms. Spin your biceps out like they're in the strap again. Spread across your collarbones. Feel your blades on your back strong, so you feel your strong back muscles. Grow your neck longer, right through the core of the neck. Good job, now bend your right knee. Step back into warrior one. Raise your arms up. Right hand to your hip. Grow longer through the reach of your left fingers and the reach of your back foot. Then spin your back heel up, but keep that length through your back leg. Lean out over your knee and twist, hook the elbow to the knee. As you press your elbow down, lift your heart up first, then join your palms together. Good. 
Imagine you're pressing your back foot back against the wall and then feel your head. You're aiming straight out in between your ankles. So if you look down, you can see, oh, I'm not sinking over the right one. I'm not leaning back, but I'm aiming straight out in between my ankles. Then spin from your left side, lower belly up towards your right shoulder. Bring your hands down to the mat. Step back into downward dog, or you can add a vinyasa up to you. Step your left foot, crescent lunge, back heel up, left outer hip strong. Don't let the hip wander out to the side as you come up. Good. Keep that left knee on a track. It didn't sink in. Then arms to your side, lean out over your knee. Place the hands on the block in front of you or whatever you got. Step up. You could use a chair seat or something, a coffee table. Okay, but important, get the hips level, get the waist level. So you're going to be using this hip well. If it's difficult to level, you can bend your left knee. Press down even into your left foot. Then one arm at a time without twisting, without rounding or sinking. Hold the length of your spine as you take one arm and then the other. Then let's turn the arms like when they're in the strap so we can activate those back muscles, back of the shoulder muscles. Grow a line of energy from your tail to your crown. Make it even longer. Breathe through it. Ooh, that looks great. Now bend your left knee and as smooth as you can, step back into warrior one. Raise your arms. Place your left hand on your hip, reach up past your fingers, then spin your back heel up and twist, hook the elbow to the knee. Push the elbow down, lift from the navel up to your heart and bring your left hand to your hip, uh, palms together. Bring your left hand to your right. Hands back to the mat, step right back into down dog or take a vinyasa, your call. Set your knees down on the ground, set your elbows down. Line up your elbows, put them right underneath your center shoulders. Then turn your thumbs up so we can activate those external rotators. Again, when hands turn in, biceps turn, tend to turn in, shoulders turn to turn, tend to turn in. It's not necessary. You can learn to turn the hands without losing the shoulder, but it's going to help like training wheels to turn the thumbs up. So keep that rotation. Stay broad across the tops of the blades, middle in. Now curl your toes, lift your knees an inch. Hold strong there in that position. And if you feel like you got the shoulders solid, lift the hips straight up in the air. Good. Now if you're like, dude, this is super easy. First, don't call me dude, this is respectful. Uh, no, okay. Uh, see if you can maybe take one leg up from the inner thigh. That's good, but nothing from downstairs should change. Shoulders stay even. If you lose something in the hips, shoulders, waist, don't take the leg up. Change legs. Foundation's got to be there. Take the other leg up. Stay steady. Stay solid in those forearms from elbow to wrist, rooting down through the whole blade of the forearm. Good. Then lower that leg back down and walk into plank on your forearms. Good. Now we're going to do this plank variation. It's called like a plank plus or an arc plank. You're going to set the knees down for a moment. And now I want you to do the shoulder blades like the cat shoulder blades. So spread the shoulder blades as much as you can. The other way, the cat goes that way. Yeah, I know it's confusing for me too, which is the cat. But don't hike your traps when you do it. Then I want the glutes to engage towards the backs of the knees. So you have a little tuck. Now maintaining this arc plank, step one leg back and then the other. Hold there. So this is good for engaging your serratus anterior, the rectus abdomini, 
but we don't want to we don't want to always do these types of plank because that would be bad for our mind body connection when we're trying to strengthen the core we want it to be long too but we're going to hold this one push push from your blades into your elbows tuck your glutes tuck your buttock tuck your low abs okay then slowly go into the regular plank pelvis in neutral blades in neutral spread collarbones and now if you want to try to challenge that plank raise your right leg up an inch nothing should change though from your middle or your shoulders left leg up an inch holy this is the plank from hell oh my gosh set that foot down press your forearms spread your collarbones and then slowly lower your hips down sphinx pose if it feels like it's sinking so much in your lower back take your elbows more forward and then draw the energy from the lumbar up the spine up through thoracic good now curl your toes under lift your knees hips up come back into plank on your forearms walk your feet in down dog on your forearms with control mindfully now with the hands flat lift the elbows straight up good then jump through to seated and lie on your back <clears throat> bring your legs into tabletop position hands behind your head as you exhale crunch up towards your right knee abs in and push your left heel forward come back to center knees together exhale to your left knee push your right inhale to center exhale to the right inhale to center exhale to the left you get the idea keep going side to side 20 more seconds So this type of ab work, this is like that plank where you're crunched. Again, it's good to develop certain muscles in your core, but the ultimate for me, most important is cultivating the neutral because it helps us when we're doing everything else. And we spend so much time like this already that it's good to help to cultivate the neutral posture, core strength, neutral spine rather. So now hold in the middle, lower your head down. And this is a great one to help with the neutral. Stretch your arms straight up and slowly push your right leg forward without your belly following as you stretch your left arm back see if you can stretch the arm and the leg further away from each other without losing your neutral spine bring the arm and the leg back up change sides push your left heel forward and slowly reach your right arm so the neck shouldn't get weird the lower back shouldn't lift the ribs should stay in come back up change sides hold it out there see if you can reach longer and longer but keep the hips reaching out of the lower back keep those bones behind your ears lengthen away from your hips change sides good bring it back up now last one push both feet forward at a high diagonal keeping those abs in and then see if you can take the arms back and hold grow the spine longer in fact good 10 more seconds see if maybe you can lower your legs a little lower keeping the buttocks out of the back good then bring the knees in towards your chest hands to your knees set your feet down onto the ground open your arms up like cactus Take your feet the width of your mat. Great stretch to help to open up the tension in the chest and the shoulders here. Let the knees swivel over to the right as you look to your left. Change size, knees to the left as you look to your right. Come back to center come into bridge pose now bridge is going to be one of the best postures 
to help with the same shoulder activation that we're working on. So lift your hips up just a little bit, just halfway into bridge, and then we're gonna do that same strap action. Spin your biceps out, feel like you're trying to press this thing right here. This is called your humeral head, the top of the humerus. Reach it down into the floor, but when you do that, don't harden from your lower back and your bottom ribs. Keep your ribs contained as you turn on those back muscles, and that will truly decide if you're using those back muscles. We tend to just hinge from the middle instead of actually using the muscles in the back of the shoulder. And now feel your shoulder blades, the bottom inner corners of the blades start to push in. Then engage your glutes, the inner buttock, middle buttock, you wanna engage without the groins thrusting up, engage your hamstrings and start to lift up. Keep your neck free and long. Good, lower your buns back down. Cross your right ankle over your left knee. Hug it in. Change sides. Uncross your legs, Shavasana, course pose. Turn your palms up at your side. Let your feet fall open. Let your body completely relax now. Give yourself permission and just completely relax. And each time you exhale, visualize each exhalation like a wave of energy rolling down past your chest, past your hips, away from your feet, down and away from you. And each wave of exhalation is taking with it any tension or grips that you're still holding. any worries or concerns that come up. So you have time to be fully present. Feeling the flow of energy in your body or the life force energy, your vital energy. And just notice how when you're connected to this source, you feel calm yet energized at the same time. You can feel your inner power. Gently bend your knees. Roll over to your right side. Press yourself up to seated. Bring your palms together. Thanks, namaste. All right, well, thank you so much for watching today. Uh, I appreciate that Marlena was able to come and demonstrate because it's really helpful when we do these types of classes for me to be able to show it on somebody who could do it well. So thanks to Marlena. And uh, if you have any requests 
for videos like this on other body parts, things in the practice that you're not sure about, just let me know below. And I will get Marlene to come back out. She'll do that again. And uh, that'll be good. Okay, so have a great week. Uh, hey, make sure to hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, and because uh, that's a good thing to do. All right, bye.